Hey guys, it's Charles of Premium B, and in this video, we're gonna learn how to use the After Effects plugin modulation. And I'll also cover some extra tips and tricks that I do whenever I use this plugin so you guys can get the most out of it. So if this looks cool to you, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, as I mentioned, we're gonna be using the After Effects plugin called Modulation, which is available from AE Scripts. This plugin creates a unique waveform effect on whatever footage you apply it to. It also reminds me a lot of kind of like a retro transmission signal. I use this plugin quite a bit whenever I'm creating glitchy looking visuals. And you can see some examples of that on Lewis McGregor's piece called The Battle of the Solo Filmmaker. I actually got a chance to create several of the glitch effects for that video, and I use the Modulation plugin for several effects. I'll have that full video on the blog post if you wanna go check that out, and a link for that will be in the description. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects now and start using modulation. All right, guys, so what I've got here in my composition is just a photograph of one of my friends, and this is of a face, you know, kind of close up, and modulation works really well when you apply it to like people that are kind of close to the camera or like distinctive faces, because you're gonna be able to recognize that a lot easier with the effect applied to it. And obviously this plugin works on both photos and video. We're gonna take a look at using it on both. But to start this, I just wanna start with a photograph just so we can kind of see what the controls and everything's doing. So I've got the picture selected here. Let's come here to effect. And I'm coming here to Zabex and select modulation. And now this usually never happens. So I gotta kind of mention this, but a lot of times when you apply this effect, it may not look as good immediately like this image actually does. So in our case here, it kind of looks cool right off the bat. But what you're gonna need to adjust here are these first three settings, the omega, phase, and distortion. And we can toggle these. If I just go ahead and turn this off, I wanna show you something else too. Another thing that helps when you're using modulation is to have your subject be kind of over like a plain background or maybe an out of focus background. Uh, it tends to work best for it to like kind of grasp onto those facial features. So if I turn this back on, you can kind of see how we're already getting a pretty good result with this immediately. Again, this usually never happens and your footage will vary drastically, again, depending on the shot. So I wanna make that clear. But let's go ahead and let's toggle these different omega phase and distortion. So if I just grab these and kind of start pulling those, you can kind of see how this changes, kind of how the waves look. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Z to undo that. So that was omega and we have phase. And I like this one a lot because it kind of gives you this straight lines at the end and then you can kind of distort it over and you can start to see the face appear. And then we have the distortion. That kind of gives you an idea of the basics of kind of the core of modulation and the settings you're going to adjust. So you can keyframe those, kind of create different animations. Now let me zoom in here a little bit more on the face. The low passes here just kind of make the lines thicker is my understanding. So if I go ahead and turn this on, you see it makes each of those thicker so you can kind of adjust how those look. I'll turn these back off. And then for the direction, this just changes kind of which way the waves are kind of moving to. You can kind of see we get waves on this side and then kind of the dots on this side. So if I go ahead and set that to backward, it just kind of flips that. And then we have the orientation. So it's set on vertical currently, the line's running up and down and we can change this to horizontal. And this is kind of crazy, it kind of gives you almost like a melted look. So that's pretty neat. I'll go ahead and flip this back to vertical. And then we have invert, which is just what you think, just inverts the colors there. And we have opacity. And we have ignore alpha and hide white line. We'll look at these a little bit more later. The hide white line, if I just check that off, you can see it just has this white line. That's where kind of the lines are coming from the waveform. So I'm just gonna leave that checked so we don't have that there. Now, one of the cool things I've often seen done with modulation is kind of this slow keyframing movement, almost for like a loop or something like that. So I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit. And I'm gonna come up here to the phase. Let's go ahead and create a keyframe for that. Now let's move down here to four seconds. And I'm just gonna bump this up just a little bit so it's like at 15, I'm gonna hit one, I'm gonna set a five there. So instead of it being 150, we'll have it be 155. So just a very small change there. And you can kind of see what this is doing. We get a little bit of that subtle movement. So let's go ahead and RAM preview this. And now we can see the result of that. It's a really cool looking effect. I love the dots over here on the right hand side. You can kind of see how the lines are just subtly moving, kind of almost like a, a weird transmission or something like that. Now let's look at a few ways we can enhance the look of this modulation effect, kind of match more of those examples that we showed at the beginning. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is select my picture, and I'm gonna come up here to effect. Let's go to color correction. We're gonna apply a tint effect. And what this is gonna allow us to do is change the color of these lines. So you can see we have the map white too. So I can select that and come over here and let's change this to a color. So now you see it's tinting the lines and we can come through here and just change this to any color we want. I'm gonna set this to be like a cyan blue, kind of like a sci-fi effect. So this is already starting to look pretty slick just with that. The next thing we can do is apply a glow on top of this. So let's just come here to effect. 
and come down to stylize and I'm gonna select glow. And the default glow isn't necessarily ideal. We can kind of stack multiple copies of this to enhance it a little bit more, or you can just toggle with this and, and just kind of find your own look, dialing it in. It's just that with the default glow, it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna use multiple copies of the glow effect on the threshold, I'm gonna set this to be zero. For the radius, I'm gonna set this to like 40. And then for the intensity, I'm gonna set this to like 0.2. So very low. And then I'm just gonna select that and hit Control D, Command D on a Mac to duplicate it. And then on that second copy, I'm gonna bump up the radius here to be like 160. And then the glow intensity set it to be like 0.4. So we get a little bit extra glow there coming from that and you kind of see, just giving us a slight sci-fi look on top of that. Now, what I personally recommend you use for the glow, again, you can tweak these and continue to stack these, dial that in, but there are some glow plugins that work a lot better. And since we're already using the plugin with modulation, I'm gonna show you the plugin that I typically use for my glow effects. Uh, especially with modulation. So I'm gonna delete both of those glow effects and it's gonna be the deep glow effect from plugin everything. So I'm gonna come here to effect. And let's come in here to plugin everything and deep glow. Again, this is another third party plugin, but you can already see like how much better this glow looks. Now I'm gonna dial this back quite a bit. I'm gonna set the radius to be like 300 and the exposure, I'm gonna set this to be like 0.25. So again, it's pretty subtle, but the fall off, if we zoom in here, you can see just the fall off of the glow is a lot more natural looking. Uh, and I like the look of it quite a bit more than just using the default glow, but sometimes obviously you have to use what you have. And so here's a quick preview of what everything looks like, you know, with the glow and the tint applied to it and kind of that animation. Now let's look at what this might look like if it's applied to something like video. So here's a video example, and this is just footage of me talking, you know, so it, just like the tutorial. And what I've actually done in this case is I've applied modulation to an adjustment layer. So that's another option you have. And if you wanna do that, what you can do, kind of a benefit of this if you do that is come over to mode and you can set this to be like add and that will add that on top of your footage so that can look kind of cool maybe set this to screen if it's too bright that way you can kind of add you know, if you want to add glitchy lines like really quickly kind of flashing on screen on top of something you kind of get this you know distortion that is actually reactive to the footage that's kind of a cool effect so i'll set that back to normal and you can see here in this case i've just done the tint effect for white and i've got deep glow applied to this as well but obviously you can see my face kind of coming through there and kind of what that looks like with the movement. So I'll just ram preview this. And now we can see how that looks, kind of like a glitchy transmission. Again, it's just footage from one of the other tutorials that we have, but you can kind of get a base for how that would react on video. Now let's look at another example. So this is with modulation applied to footage that has an alpha channel. And so let me just go ahead and kind of solo this. So here's the original footage. It's just me on a green screen. I've keyed it out. And I really like using modulation with images or video clips like this because now we can kind of control the effect even more on what it's kind of covering up and you can kind of get a better sense for the shape. So if I unsolo this, we can see I've applied modulation to this footage. And in this case, I've got it running horizontally. So it's gonna give this like melty effect. And I've keyframed very low the distortion value here. So it's a very subtle amount and you can see kind of it animates these lines. Let me go ahead and ramp preview this. And I really love the way this looks because again, you have the lines kind of creeping up really slowly on the side here and you get kind of this weird, almost scary, like melty look kind of coming off the face there. And when you have this applied to something that has an alpha channel, like I said earlier, we can come over here to this ignore alpha. And if we uncheck this, this will now apply modulation to everything else, you know, outside of that alpha channel. So it mainly is gonna be lines usually because there's nothing really else there. So just gonna kind of fill in those gaps with the lines. But that's what that would look like if you tell it to ignore the alpha channel. And here's another example here. This is just with the After Effects logo. You can see and that's on an alpha channel. And when I apply modulation to that, you can see the result we get with this. Now there is a way we can kind of enhance this a little bit more and we'll cover that in just a second. All right guys, now that only the cool kids are kind of left watching this video because we know most people have already clicked off at this point, they got bored. Now I'm gonna share with you some of the extra kind of tips and tricks I use with modulation for my own stuff to kind of enhance the look of it, make it look a little bit nicer. Now these are kind of my own secrets. I don't really want to share them with too many people, but I trust you guys, so keep these to yourself. Uh, and if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up so I know how many people actually saw this. All right, guys, so one of the ways I really like to enhance modulation is using a free plugin, which is also from Plugin Everything, and that is Quick Chromatic Aberration. And this can give us just a little bit more enhancement on the glow and the colors. So let me zoom in here a little bit. And again, this plugin is free, so you can download it from Plugin Everything. I'll have a link for that on the blog post. So I'm gonna select my picture here come here to effect. Let's come out here to plug in everything and quick chromatic aberration too. I'm gonna click that. 
And if we zoom in here, we're gonna see kind of what's happening. So the default position is 0.5. So let's just bump this up to one so we can see it a little bit easier. But you can see, if I go ahead and check this on and off, it's giving us a slight kind of chromatic effect on those lines. And I really like the way that looks, especially with the glow. And so we can bump that up even more if you wanted something kind of crazy like this. This is just nice for creating another kind of element or layer, kind of giving it more of a sci-fi look or transmission look. And of course, you can change the different colors you wanna have it affect. Uh, let me change the color of this to be more like a gold color. And you can kind of see how that comes through, kind of that RGB split effect. So that's something that I will typically apply uh, with this. And a lot of times I might just keep it very subtle at something like the default, like 0.5 but that can add just a little bit extra there. The next thing I like to do a lot of is use blur maps. So using like a camera lens blur with a gradient ramp blur map. So let me go ahead and let's do a new adjustment layer. And with that select, let's go ahead into effect. And under blur, we're gonna select the camera lens blur. So this is gonna render quite a bit slower, but it's just a much better quality blur. Go ahead and check on repeat edge pixels. Let's bump this up to like 40. And if you have any extra like blur plugins, you know, that are even better than this, by all means use those. So let's come over here and we're gonna go to the blur map. So you can see this where we can select a layer. So I'm just gonna come over here and I've got this gradient ramp image. I'll just drop this on the top here. And you can see what this is, just a typical gradient ramp where we have kind of a, a black layer in the center here and it kind of falls off near the edges. And you can make your own using shape layers or make any other design you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the visibility of this off and we go back to our adjustment layer here. And on the blur map, let's go ahead and select that gradient ramp. And now you can see what a cool effect this gives. It's almost like a tilt shift lens effect or like a micro lens effect, how the lines are kind of falling off, shallowed up the field style. And then we can kind of see the face here. And we can see a preview of what this looks like with that applied. And I'll mention this is a similar effect that I used here for this shot with the mountains here. You can see how it kind of falls out of focus. And with this particular shot, I really like it because it almost makes the lines seem as if, you know, when they're out of focus right here, they're closer to the camera. So it kind of gives you a nice leading lines effect there. And this actually animates, you can kind of see that. But that's using a similar technique with that camera lens blur map. And with this one, I actually used another plugin. It's from AE Scripts called Diopter, a very underrated plugin. Highly recommend you check that out. It just allows you to create these kind of like camera lens blur depth maps really quickly and easily. It gives you a lot of options with those. So that's something also worth checking out. Another way you can enhance kind of the glow of the modulation is by using grain, and you can use the default grains in After Effects, or what I like to use is actual film grain overlays. And we actually have some free ones you can download from Shutterstock. I'll have a link for that on the blog post where you can find those. And that's what I'm gonna use really quickly right here. So let's come over here to these files, and I've got the film grains here. I'm gonna select this 16 millimeter course. I'm just gonna drag and drop that on top of everything. And I'm gonna resize the scale of this just so it fits the composition. And then for the mode, I just need to set this now to overlay. And now in our case here, we can still see the gray from the film grain. And actually what's happened with this is if we come down here to the picture where I applied that quick chromatic aberration to, there's an option here for unmolt and it's on by default. So just go ahead and check that off and that will make sure the film grain looks correct here like normal. But you can just see we get this subtle grain appearing on that glow. If I toggle this on and off, you can really kind of see it what that's doing. And it's just a nice way to enhance it, just a little bit extra there. Uh, and also gives it a little more of a distorted kind of transmission feel. It can also make it feel a little more organic and get rid of some banding if you've got that happening with the glow at all. And now finally, let's go look at that alpha example with the After Effects logo. You can see when I apply modulation to this, we get a little bit of a, a kind of a distinct result. And this may not be exactly what you want. So what you can actually do, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. I'm gonna come over to my After Effects logo here and I've applied some noise. So just under effect, noise and grain and just noise. And I'm gonna check this on. So it's adding a subtle amount of noise to this. And now let's go ahead and turn modulation back on. And now you can see this looks quite a bit better in my opinion, uh, just the way it kind of breaks that up. And obviously because it's kind of a very like sporadic look, you could obviously freeze frame this if you don't want that aspect of it. But I feel that this looks a lot better uh, than without the noise on, unless you just want it to have a lot of those straight lines like that. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed checking out the modulation plugin. Again, I'll have links for everything that I mentioned over on the blog post on Premium Beat, and I will catch you guys on the next one. And don't share those secrets for real.